How do you find an Amazon FBA supplier? How do you make sure they don't scam you and take your money and just simply run away and at least get you good quality products? Well, in this video, we're gonna be talking about all those things. I have a few things that I want to cover here, so let's go ahead and get started with you know, these two things actually before we jump into the MLQ and I'll explain what that means. So one thing that a lot of times people um, miss when, you know, negotiating with suppliers is how long has this person been a supplier? Now, why is the length of the supplier been a supplier uh, matter to you? Because you want to make sure that they are experienced. Should I have gone and made this video or say you've been following me for six months? And when you first started following me, you, one of the first questions you probably were asking yourself, is this person legit? How long have they been an Amazon seller and should I really listen to them? Because one commodity that we, you know, it's like the, the biggest and the best resource that we have is our time. And if you're going to give me your time so you can learn from me, you know, you want to make sure that the information that I'm giving you is legit. And one of the main ways to find that out is to make sure that the, you know, that I've, that I'm experienced, right? in selling on Amazon. So that way the information that I'm giving you is important. Now, why is having a good supplier important when it comes to your Amazon business? Well, a few different things, right? And one of them being that you want to make sure that you get, that they guarantee your results, right? And they guarantee you uh, quality. So one of the main things is quality, right? The other thing is you want to make sure that there is consistency. Right? And then the third thing is you want to make sure that your business is scalable, so scalability. And why is that important? Simply because if you found a product today, you want to make sure that this product is going to be, say you're able to sell 300 units when you first launch. That's cool, you got your first 300. Say three months later, you're selling 1500 units. You want to be able to say, I can go back to my same supplier and depend on it. And that's the beautiful thing about selling on Amazon private label FBA is because if you found one product, literally one product could make you 10, 20, 50, $100,000 a month. I'm not saying all of them can, but usually the average of a product could make you between five to $10,000 per month. Where to make that kind of money with another uh, concept, say drop shipping, you need to probably have about 20 to 50 different products and need to constantly be looking for products and that's why I personally prefer private label. But if your supplier isn't reliable, then it's just a waste of time, right? So length, how long have they been a supplier? For me personally, I say that they have to be a supplier for a minimum of one, two, three years. So this is for me is the shortest time. Now, if you're going to outsource your product on Alibaba, the website will tell you how long the supplier has been, which takes me to point number two, gold. Are they a golden supplier? Meaning, do they have trade assurance? And that's the other one, trade assurance, right? What trade assurance is, it's kind of like, I don't know how it is in other countries, but I know in the USA, um, if you are a, um, if you are a contractor, say you are a, uh, you know, you do like you frame walls or whatever you do, you're a contractor, you have a contractor's license. There is an insurance on you where you have to kind of put in money in this like, in this trust kind of, where the insurance company holds that money, say it's 10,000 or 20,000. If I am your client and then I pay you say $5,000 to do a job, and then you don't deliver on the job and, I, and there is no way for me to reach you, I can reach to your uh, insurance company and get compensated by them. And I found this out because back in 2011, I think, in our pizza shop, we hired somebody to repair our AC units and I think we paid them like $2,700. They changed something and then it broke. And then I kept on calling them for a month and I couldn't get a hold of them. So I was able to go to their company, to the insurance company and get compensated by them. So this is what trade assurance is. You want to make sure that all the suppliers you work with have it on Alibaba, it makes it easier because on the website, it'll tell you if the, if the supplier has it. And you want to make sure that they are a golden supplier, means that they are paying to be where they are. They're not just there, they have like a free listing or whatever, just because that means they are more invested in their, um, in their business, right? 
the other thing is uh, how much per kg you're getting from them, meaning um, you know, how much are they charging you? And this goes back to the, um, I guess it goes to the, uh, manufa not manufacturer, this goes to the, um, to the freight forwarder part of it, to the shipping part of it, right? So this is, this is on the shipping side. Right, so how much they charge you per kg is very important. Right before the pandemic, it was about three to four dollars. I've seen suppliers that can charge as much, you know, as little as that still until this day. But it is possible that they may charge you a little bit more. But that's where you know having uh, quotes from multiple different suppliers and comparing them against each other really comes in handy. So that's very important because the pro the the price of the product that your manufacturing could decrease and increase with MOQ, which is something that we're gonna talk about next, which is minimum order quantity. As this goes up, as you order more and more products, your, ship, your manufacturing costs can go down. However, the, the freight forwarder that they deal with is very important as well, because even if the cost of the, the goods, the manufacturing of the goods goes down, and the shipping cost goes up, your DDP price, which is the door-to-door -door price, will still remain the same. So that's very important for you to know, how, you know what kind of relationships do they have with which freight forwarders and how much am I getting charged per kg? And you can compare that against other suppliers. Now, here's the cool thing. You don't need to get shipping from them as well. You can go and find your own freight forwarder. Um, you could only get manufacturing from them. So they manufacture the product, they ship it to the freight forwarder, or the freight forwarder comes and picks up from their warehouse, and then the freight forwarder uh, ships to Amazon's warehouses or whatever uh, uh, other place you're, ship you're, you're selling in. I'm assuming it's Amazon because you're watching my channel. Uh, but aside from that, uh, before we jump into the next thing, if you guys are enjoying this content so far, please do me a favor and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and also be sure to give this video a thumbs up and drop in the comments, let us know what questions you have. We'd love to um, answer them for you. So before we go to shipping, let's actually jump to MOQ. So this is very important, especially if you are a brand new seller. If you're just starting out, you've got a few thousand dollars, you wanna launch your first product, you just wanna get your feet wet, you wanna kind of test the waters and see how things are going, right? So usually, usually, usually most suppliers have a MOQ of 200. Now some of them might have an MOQ of as high as 500 units. That means they will not manufacture for you a product unless you order 500 units. Now, usually from what I've seen is 200. So this is another thing that you wanna be looking for. You know, does this supplier have a high MOQ? And if that's the answer, if the answer is yes, then, you know, it's probably they're like a more tight supplier and they're not very like lenient with making things and changing things. And then if that's the case, if especially if they're, you know, MOQ is up to a thousand, you're gonna probably notice that there are other things that they're not willing to do. Like if you want them to make changes to certain products, if you want them to make edits, if you want them to create packaging, excuse me, if you want them to create packaging, the other cool thing is that some suppliers will also allow you to create your own custom packaging, right? Usually that only happens at a thousand units or more. So if you're gonna order a thousand units or more, they will throw in packaging for free, customized packaging, right? But, but some suppliers, if they're cool, they'll do it at the 500 level. Sometimes they'll even do it at the 200 level, especially if they like you. And that's the other thing that you want to do is you want to be on the better side of suppliers. You don't want to be an a-hole. You don't want to be someone where they, like they almost feel like you're talking down um, at them, right? You want to create a good relationship. Another quick pro tip, one of our students or a couple of our students, what they have been doing to build a better relationship with their suppliers is that they have been sending gifts. Can't even spell. So they've been sending gifts to their suppliers, right? So what they do is say they start working with a supplier. Um, usually what we like to do is uh, say we contact 10 to 20 different suppliers. We send them the same exact, uh, the same exact uh, uh, script, you know, hey, this is what I'm looking for. And usually what I like to say is I want a quote for, and, and write this down, this is very important. I want a quote for 200, I want a quote for 500, I want a quote for 1,000, right? And usually you're gonna see if like, the DDP price, which is manufacturing plus shipping, um, is 
uh, say four dollars and fifty cents. It'll be four dollars and fifty cents for two hundred. It'll be four dollars and like thirty cents um, for five hundred. And it'll be like four dollars and twenty cents, or even four dollars for one thousand units. Because the more you order, the cheaper the product will be. Simply because they're making more. You know, their their mindset is. I'm gonna make more money as I sell more. It's gonna be slimmer margins, but you know, because they're ordering more units and they want people to order in volume, right? They would rather produce thousands of units to one seller than a couple hundred units for five different sellers. You know what I mean? So um, you want to show them that you will order and that you have the purchasing power, but they obviously need to give you a better price. And then usually what I like to do is I like to go and try to hustle them down to giving me the highest units price for the lowest units amount you know, uh, possible. So say if I only want to order 250 units, I'll try to get them to give me the 1,000 unit price for the 250 units. And I explain to them that, hey, look, this is a test order. Moving forward, we anticipate this product to sell at least 500 to 1,000 units per month. So I'm going to be selling. And I want to build that relationship as well. Once I find one or two suppliers that I'm dealing with all the time, one thing, as I mentioned earlier, a couple of our students have been sending gifts. Hey, what do you like? What are you into? Are you into sports? Are you into this? Are you into this? You know, uh, whatever it is, send them some type of a gift. It's uh, spontaneous. And also, uh, you know, they, they just kind of feel like they feel appreciated, you know, like, okay, you actually truly care, you know, so that's kind of cool building that relationship with your suppliers. Um, the other thing is shipping time. So that's super important, especially now after the pandemic, shipping times have expanded. I mean, I remember three years ago, I used to order a product. Uh, I used to find a product, vet it, get it, you know, get it going, find a supplier in two weeks I am I'm launching, you know, because, uh, you know, the manufacturing time was shorter, the shipping time I could ship it via air, now via air is not really possible, although there are some products still that we ship via air because they're very light, but shipping times are important, usually, right now, shipping times are anywhere between 25 to 35 days, that's C, C shipping, right, if you're going to ship to the U.S., now it's a little different if you're gonna ship to, uh, uh, to, uh, to, to um, uh, Europe. It's actually a little, the time is less. So if you are somebody who wants to sell in Europe, this might be a good time for you because uh, it's possible that some of the shipments even go by train from uh, China to like Germany or something like that, right? And so the shipping time is maybe like two thirds of the time instead of, you know, instead of 25 to 35, it's like more like 15 to 25 or 15 to 20 days, right? Um, but you also want to look at the shipping times and this kind of ties up to the, their freight forwarders, you know, who are the freight forwarders they're dealing with? Now, you gotta understand, the manufacturer themselves don't have direct influence on that, right? But it shows you what kind of relationships that they have built. If they truly care about the customer, which is you, they would have built better relationships if their shipping if their shipping times take like 40, 45 days. You know, there are hundreds and thousands of freight forwarders out there. They would take it on them upon themselves to go find better freight forwarders. So if this, you know, if this is like 45 to 60 days, then you're like, all right, well, they don't even care about me. They just want products to sell me. Therefore, they haven't even invested in finding better freight forwarders. Therefore, something else is wrong here, right? And the last thing is communication, and I think we already talked about this a little bit um, when I was talking about the gift, but this is very important because you want to make sure that the supplier is communicating with you very well. Now, I want to explain more about communication because I think this is one of the very important aspects of finding a great supplier and making sure that you don't get scammed or you, know, you actually have a long-lasting relationship and at the end of the day, to scale your business. But before I get into there, if this is your first time checking this out, be sure to subscribe, but also right below this video, there is a link to a short presentation where we explain to you exactly what BJK University is about and how you can get involved with us. So if you want to learn from us, be sure to click that link below. Now, communication is key because, you see, oftentimes what happens is, you know, when you're first launching a brand new product, you've never launched it before, it's a lot easier, you know, you could take longer negotiating, you could take longer producing the product, and it's usually the, like, the toughest time, you know, because you're, especially if it's a brand new product, you know, not just brand new supplier, but a brand new product, because you still don't know what the product looks like, you're still kind of going back and forth, ordering samples, which you should definitely do. Write this down. 
you should be ordering samples and not from every supplier. Say you contact 10, 15 suppliers, you bring it down to two, three, order samples from every single one of them. Also order samples from the top two or three competitors and compare those two together. So say you launch the product and things are good, but then now you're, you're selling a lot, long, a lot more than you, you anticipated to sell and you need, like you know you're gonna, find, you're gonna uh, sell out, right? Well, you don't wanna sell out. You don't want to run out of inventory because with Amazon, when you run out of inventory, you, you get deranked and it's harder to get back up to where you were uh, when you're relaunching you know, than when you're actually first launching. So that's very important. That's where really uh, communication is super key simply because you want to be able to get a, get a hold of your supplier ASAP. You wanna make sure that you, you know, if you're like, look man, I'm about to run out, I've got enough stock to get me say for 30 days, but I know with manufacturing and shipping it's gonna take 45 days, we gotta hustle up, right? You want someone that's going to feel as, you know, feel that urgency for you, right? Because obviously you're in the line of fire and it's, you know, all, all eyes are on you, but you want them to also get that sense of urgency as well and say, okay, man, we got you. We're gonna put you in, in, the, in front of the line. And this is where this can come in handy, right? Where it's like, hey, man, look, you know what? You're taking care of me. I like working with you. I'm gonna, you know, put your order in the front of the line. We're gonna get you out of here in like three days or four days or something like that, right? And then you want it to be on top of it. I've got your packaging. We've already figured that out. Maybe if you want to make some edits and change to your product, you also want them to be very quick about that and then giving you ideas about how to differentiate your product, how to stand out. Hey, I've seen this other seller do something like that. You want to build that relationship because it's very important because look, having a great product is what will help you scale. And that's what it's all about. If you can't scale your product, why are we even in business, right? Like it's cool to sell 300 units the first month but it's a lot cooler and then cool to sell 300 units the next month and 300 units the following month, but it's cool, cooler to sell 400 units the second month and 600 units the third month and 1,000 units the sixth month, right? And that's only possible if you've got a great relationship, but most importantly, the communication is there with your supplier, right? That way, they will be there, they will be on top of things, they will even present to you other ideas that they might think would add value to your product and add value to your customer. Therefore, you can charge more or get more reviews or whatever the, the case may be, right? So those things are very important. In my experience, those are the first things that I look at when it comes to negotiating and finding new suppliers, making sure they don't screw me at the end of the day. So hope this video found you well and hope you found Val in here. If you did, please smash the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Also, if you want to learn from us, check out the link below this video. I will see you there. Take care.